Kristen Ritter, uh, you play the title character in Jessica Jones, which is one of the latest extensions of the Marvel Universe. Uh, what was the process like uh, for you being cast in such a big, ever-growing uh, universe like Marvel has become these days? Yeah, you know, um, I it was nothing too fancy. Um, I auditioned for the role, you know, the good old-fashioned way that you get parts. Um, I was given a set of fake sides that didn't give me a lot of information. Um, it was a couple of scenes, but within those scenes, they were very layered. Um, she was, you know, talking about this this bad guy coming back. And so even just for the audition, I had to layer in a lot of backstory and there was a lot of work to be done. Um, and then I met with, that went well, my audition went well. <laughs> um, and then I met with Melissa Rosenberg and Jeff Loeb. This was probably a month later. Um, and they sort of pitched me the show in, um, in big broad strokes. Um, I had to keep bugging them for more information because they're very cryptic and secretive at Marvel. Um, but they, they talked about the show tonally um, like Homeland or Dexter and how also the character, you know, was never going to be like flying around like Superman. It was going to be very grounded, very gritty, very real. And then at the end of the meeting, they said that she also needed to be funny. So that's when I was like, okay, let me read the scripts. I don't think Jeff Loeb wanted me to read the scripts, but I think I was pretty convincing at, at, at the moment. And he did let me. Um, and I came out of the room and was like, okay, what do I have to do? And that ended up being quite a bit. <laughs> uh, I had to do a couple of screen tests. Um, and then I was waiting. And then um, instead of hearing whether I got the part or not, they said I had to screen test again. So I had to jump through a lot of hoops and it was a, a couple of month long process. Um, you know, it was a big commitment. It was a big financial investment for Netflix and Marvel because it's Jessica Jones on air and the Defenders on air. So that's, you know, it's a big deal. So I definitely felt a lot of pressure and um, it, it, in a way that was a good thing because when I did finally walk on her stay, I never had that moment like, oh shit, maybe I can't pull this off. I felt like I really won the role and earned it. So day one, I felt confident. So it all worked out. Uh, so yeah, since they're so secretive uh, over at Marvel, uh, did you, did you, once you finally did get the part uh, officially, uh, did you have the whole story for the first season laid out for you or did you learn it episode by episode? I, I had the first four episodes. So that was amazing having that, that much material. Also, I have the source material to go back to which was amazing. So I got to um, really layer in and work on the backstory for this character because she is so informed by a backstory that I had a lot of what I needed to go and, and be able to handle everything that they th would throw at me, throw at me for episodes to come. I mean, there was some stuff that I, I worked on with a different thing in mind than, I, for example, I didn't know that Rachel Taylor's character, Trish, was going to end up being my sister. I, I didn't know that. I, I knew that there was like real history there. Um, I actually couldn't tell if they maybe were um, lovers at one point, just because their relationship was so dynamic and complex and so real and so alive that I just felt like there had to be more there. Um, so that's a testament to some amazing writing on Melissa's part, even just making that that relationship so rich, um, uh, it was, that was a real it was a real joy, you know, for me and for Rachel and for us to play. Uh, a lot of the uh, the Marvel films and TV shows uh, are are more lighthearted, you know, the Avengers, uh, Agents of Shield, uh, you know, they, they do they they get serious from time to time, but they tend to be a lot sunnier than uh, Jessica Jones, especially. Uh, you know, how did you feel about taking this kind of intense approach to the superhero genre? I mean, I was so excited about it. You know, Marvel's quality is so high, and to be um, involved with a project that they're behind but is such a departure for them it was really exciting. They were always talking about the show more like Silence of the Lambs than they were the Avengers. Um, when I was telling people around me, like, what I was working on or what I had coming out next, I would explain it, and it was, it was really hard to describe just how dark it was. I would say, like, oh, I'm doing this, this is a show, you know, um, it's Marvel. And they're like, oh, well, we love the Avengers. So I'm like, okay, well, it's nothing like that, but, <laughs> but give it a shot anyway. 
Um, so I'm, I'm thrilled that the fans embraced it. Marvel got behind it in such a huge way. And it, it's fun. It's fun to do something different. You know what I mean? It's fun to do something that's outside of the box and unexpected and dark and gritty. And it, I, I'm so proud of the show. Uh, the interesting thing about you know becoming part of the Marvel Universe is that it's such a large uh, in interconnecting universe, uh, and you know Jessica Jones is already going to intersect with some other characters in the Defenders. Uh, uh, you know, what are your thoughts about about being able to play this same character in different contexts uh, under different you know producers or under you know you know different different tones of of you know the different properties out there. Yeah, you know, it's obviously, not, it's not something I've done before. Um, the great thing about Jessica is she is such a rich character that there's so much to play. You know, we had the luxury of really essentially shooting a 13-hour movie, really getting to know her, getting inside her head. This is such a psychological story. They shot it in a very psychological way. So there's just so much to play. She exists for all intents and purposes for me. Um, so I feel like there's more to be seen. I'm excited to see what Jessica gets into next. I'm excited to see what her next chapter looks like, how she deals with success, even though, you know, <laughs> she defined that probably differently than I would. Um, so I, I'm looking forward to it. I'm, ex I'm, I'm looking forward to breathing more life into this character and seeing what she gets into. If, if you uh, if you had you know, if you could uh, you know choose from the wide variety wide variety of, of other Marvel characters if you had your wish in a magic wand uh, are there any you would love to have Jessica Jones interact with? I'm not like totally super well versed in all of the Marvel characters. You know, um, Jessica was my my first experience with a comic book. I hadn't even read a graphic novel before, um, and I I mean I was all in once I read Alias. And when I had a meeting on the books with Marvel, I made sure to watch a couple of movies so I, so I knew what I was talking about. Um, I, you know, I think what Marvel does so beautifully is put the, the character first. Um, I love that they really build out who's in the suit. Obviously, Jessica's not in a suit, but that they talk about that a lot. It's not just the guy on top of the roof in the suit. It's who that guy loves, who loves him the whole, you know, really building a character. So um, I'm excited to be in the company, um, but I, I, don't, I don't have any great ideas for, for a team up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, no, uh, you know, while Jessica Jones uh, is, is technically a superhero, you know, she has like, enhanced strength. Uh, she's also very grounded uh, in dealing with, you know, surviving abuse and, and post-traumatic stress. Uh, you know, did it take a lot of preparation and, and research to, to enter that part of, of her mindset? Yeah, that I mean, Jessica Jessica Jones took more prep work than anything I've ever even imagined doing. Um, but that's that's the great part, and that's why I feel like I really hit the lottery in terms of having a great part. Everybody wants to dig their teeth in and roll up their sleeves, and you know, have that have that luxury of really just getting to work. Um, but yeah, because of her backstory, because of the emotional abuse. You know, she's she's a victim of rape and, and suffers from a drinking problem and, and PTSD. That's not just something you just flip on like a light switch. That takes a lot of layering in and, and, and prep work for sure. And uh, were there any times where, where it was hard to, to flip it off at the end of the day? Because, you know, there, there are some intense uh, dark moments, uh, you know, especially when Kilgrave comes back into the picture. Uh, uh, you know, was it ever hard to kind of uh, to, to, to take off that kind of emotional weights at the end? Yeah, 100 percent. Sometimes it does get it does get pretty hard to do that, especially when you're working for such television goes on for a long, long period of time. So yeah, by the end, I was definitely um, in pretty, I had the blues big time. I mean, I'm not, there's no reason to say I didn't. Um, because you're living in that headspace. And also, I'm in almost every scene of the show. So I was, I never, I never really had to flip it on and flip it off. I would just kind of stay in it thinking that's what I needed to do. Maybe second time around, I'll, I'll learn and from my mistakes and have more of a balance. But I definitely felt like I went into that, that, head, that, that head space almost when, they off, when I officially got the part and stayed there until, until we wrapped. And I just was trying so hard to shake it off. Um, you know, it, 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 
I wanted to to go there. I wanted to, you know, do the writing justice, do the story justice, the to the topics justice. Um, but you know, you do your best. Sometimes I had great relationships with the cast and with my hair and makeup girls who supported me with love and encouragement and mani petties and you know flowers and all that. So I had love around me, which is important. I think um, the only reason I was able to go to those dark places is because I did feel safe and loved and encouraged. Um, there were a couple of scenes. There was one scene in particular that, you know, often when you're like on the verge of tears, I mean, I'm sure everybody is feeling that way just in the past couple of days. When you're on the verge of tears for so long, holding it together, you step on your toe and you're going down, <laughs> you know? Um, so there was one scene in particular when I get in, when Jessica gets into bed and finds Ruben, you know, with his throat slit. Do we do that scene many times because of the special effects and the blood and all of that? And getting really upset, but holding it, holding it in so many times. I luckily lunch break was after that because I had to just go for a walk around the block and sort of let it let it out and feel it. But that's 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 what we do, you know, and I, I'm I'm fortunate to be challenged in that way. Now, uh, the uh, the other unique thing, other than you know, it taking a grittier look at uh, you know at the superhero world, is is that it also takes a female look at the superhero world when a lot of them are very male dominated, uh, and not just with your character, but also Trish and 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 Jerry. Uh, yeah. their, their experiences as women is such a big part of of. The show thematically. Uh, how did you feel about getting a chance to explore those themes uh, within within the superhero world? I'm so just beyond excited about it. Um, and in company, like those women are so fierce and big feminists, and just have great voices. They have so much integrity. And 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 Melissa Rosenberg, our our, our showrunner and creator, um, getting to tell authentic female stories with authentic points of view um, is is the dream. And I think I, I think. Um, we're all really proud of that, and really proud of that opportunity. Uh, the principal villain of, uh, of the season was uh, Kilgrave, uh, uh, played by David Tennant, uh, and he's such an unsettling character. And and his you know relationship and abuse of uh, you know of Jessica over the course of the season and in their history is is really really intense. Uh, how did you and, and David Tennant uh, navigate some of those darker, more intense scenes together? Just kind of going for it, you know. He's he, we're we're both so um thrilled to be a part of the show and have great writing and and that was what bonded us you know we're like all right day one you're gonna lick my face all right <laughs> um we just kind of supported each other and 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 you know i look up to him so much i was just watching him in awe i would ask him questions you know how do you maintain the schedule how do you you know um like what's the secret uh just, and he supported me 100% and had my back and we would kind of just give each other a lot of compliments. You know, I, I would try to keep my, my, my um, fandom at bay a little bit uh, to not embarrass him or make a fool of myself. But watching him work, I learned a lot and I oh, mean, God, you watching him, like especially, I don't know if you remember that scene in the precinct where Jessica is trying to get herself, you know, thrown in jail. She comes out and sees the entire police precinct, basically with guns pointing either at themselves or someone else. And Kilgrave is there. They're all under his control. And he just chewed up that scene, watching him. Like, that was his stage. And that was probably a five or six page scene. And, and he would could do everything from top to bottom without missing a beat, without missing his mark, and doing it a little different every time. Like, that guy, he's the real deal. <laughs> Now, uh, you know, another major uh, co-star this, uh, the first season of uh, Jessica Jones was uh, Luke Cage, played by yeah. Mike Coulter, uh, who's got his own spinoff show coming up, and you'll both be in The Defenders together. Uh, what, what was it like working with him? I fucking love him. Um, sorry. No, perfectly fine. Okay. I love him. I mean, we're so close now. I was probably texting with him 20 times already today. He's so special. He makes you feel so safe, and, and he just... He's a great dude, one of the nicest people I've met, not just in Hollywood, but in the world. Um, he, I felt like he always had my back. He always 
you know, it's so funny. Uh, we're on this ride together, you know. We auditioned together. We did our screen test together. We were finding out if we got the part at the same time. So it's like having that, having a buddy that really understands what you're doing, what you're going through, you gets all your references. Oftentimes, like acting is a pretty lonely experience because it's not like I'm in a rock band and have like five other dudes to relate to or have like an office. It's, it's very different. So with Mike, I feel like, yeah, I feel like we're in it together. Uh, Jessica Jones, it streams on Netflix, and, uh, and Netflix does seem to afford uh, you know, a certain amount of creative leeway that, that you might not see in either a film or on a broadcast network. Uh, do you think that's uh, an important part of the work? Um, you just broke up on that last part. Uh, a, a part. Important part of what? Uh, of what makes the show work? I think the show is, is really well suited for Netflix. Um, I love that we don't have commercial breaks. We can have a character that isn't necessarily likable. Um, uh, and just the amount of real estate that you get back with not having commercials, right? That's like an extra, I don't know, 12 minutes an episode. So that time is spent really getting inside Jessica's head and understanding why she is such an asshole, why she is having such a hard time, why all the color is drained from her life, because we get these quiet moments with her. And I don't know if you would have gotten that anywhere else because of the time constraint. She certainly is better serviced on Netflix than even a movie because in 90 minutes you wouldn't get all of that nuance um, and that backstory that you so desperately need, I think, with a character like this. Well, I want to uh, congratulate you on uh, season one of Jessica Jones and season two coming up and The Defenders coming up and any other Marvel projects and, and properties you might be uh, uh, you know, dipping your toes into over the course of the next uh, few years. Uh, and thank you so much for, for talking to me today. Yeah, thanks, Daniel. I appreciate your time. Thank you.